Thank you so much for staying on the AM show. Well, it's now time to have a conversation about doctor-patient relationship. Or let me just make it broader. The healthcare worker and the patient, or what we now call client. If you go to a private facility, you're not, you're not a patient, you're a client. The relationship between these two groups. We know over the years, it's not been too exciting. A lot of people complain about the kind of treatments they get when they visit health facilities or they come into contact with health officials. Well, the Ghana Medical Association has taken note of this and is trying to deal with the situation. Dr. Titus Bayou is General Secretary of the GMA and member of a committee, that's the public lecture committee, because you're going to be having a public lecture on this issue we are discussing. Doc, I'm happy to have you here this morning. Thank you for having me. Why are some of your health workers so mean? <sighs> Difficult to answer, but it's not expected that anybody should be mean, especially to another human being when they are at their lowest point and all they need is empathy, help and assistance from another human being. So I don't think we expect anybody to be mean. Mm. Yeah. Do your members get psychological help? Let me tell you why I'm asking this question. I don't like going to the hospital because anytime I leave the hospital, I'm depressed. Okay. Especially if I go to a public health care facility. It's either you're seeing an accident victim being brought in, yeah. there's a family on the side wailing because they just lost somebody, there's someone screaming in the labor ward. I can't stand it. Maybe I'm not cut for that profession. But do you offer psychological help to people who have to deal with this almost every day of their lives and are still expected to have the right frame of mind to attend to people? Yeah, we do. Uh, by our training, we go through a lot of psychological training. Uh, we learn, for doctors for instance, we learn psychiatry, we learn psychology as part of the training. And we have doctors who in addition even specialize in these areas. Besides this, in the major hospitals, there are clinical psychologists available to offer help to all healthcare workers who get into a state of mental breakdown. And I must admit, even despite all of this, we all get hit sometimes. You might lose a patient or get a very bad outcome and it can hit you. It can take you days to recover. A lot of the time, you're able to shake it off, recover and continue. Sometimes when the recovery takes long, then you need to get help. And this help is usually available. Mm. In, in, the, in the medical fraternity in particular, within the medical association, we even have gone further with our regulator to come up with what we call fitness to practice. So if you have mental challenges, you are hit so badly, you, you are struggling to be able to cope and concentrate, then an issue of fitness to practice comes in because you are expected as a caregiver to take good care of yourself, your own health, your mental health, and be in a state to be able to offer the best of care. Mm. Uh, but admittedly, sometimes we all get hit. Mm. There have been instances where I get home and, and sometimes I can sleep. You will think through what is happening or even in anticipation of a very difficult situation. I'm a surgeon, I'm a gynecologist. And sometimes you may even have a case you are going to do the next day and the whole night you'll be thinking about it. What could go wrong? What could go right? What you must do? All these sort of thought processes go on in our mind, all in the interest of the patient. Mm. Considering doctor to patient ratio, yeah. considering equipment, logistic yeah. constraints, considering pay, uh, salary structures yeah. for healthcare workers, do you think that sometimes the public is not compassionate enough towards you, even as they expect? to receive the compassion from the healthcare workers. Do you, do, you, do you, as health workers, sometimes feel like you don't understand our frustration? No, I think uh, we do understand the frustration uh, of patients because we are also patients ourselves. And um, my wife is a doctor as well, and, and she was telling me that the day we, our son got ill and we had to go to another department and we had to sit down and wait in a queue to be seen, then she understood very well what it meant when her patients are waiting the whole day in a queue waiting to see her. We, we are also patients, and so we think we really understand and appreciate the frustration of patients. 
what sometimes is difficult is that, you know, the patients sometimes don't see the sacrifices we make. And once you are in need or you are in pain, all you want is a solution to your pain. You don't care whatever has happened. We are looking for results and not effort. Mm. And I think that's where sometimes the mismatch comes in. Mm -hmm. Because a doctor may use his own money to pay the bill of a patient. Mm -hmm. A doctor may run around to get blood for the patient. Mm -hmm. But if unfortunately that patient dies, to help whatever you have done already, as far as a relative is concerned, they are bereaved. They are grieving. They've lost someone. So all your effort is not seen. And at that point, if the doctor doesn't have this mindset, you would find it difficult to understand why the patient don't realize what you have done mm. or what the nurse has done to make the situation better, but it didn't work. But on the other side, the patient relative doesn't care about the effort. They were looking for results. They were hoping their relative would leave, and unfortunately, the person is dead. Um, but what we would wish that the public understands more is that, yes, we work in very trying um, times, very difficult conditions, and sometimes the expectation of the patient, not their frustration, but the expectation that they have of the system is difficult sometimes to be met just by virtue of how the system is set up. Mm. If you go to a clinic where people come by appointment 20 a day, you go there, you are at your appointed time, you are seen. You get to a clinic, a doctor is going to see like 70 patients, 80 patients, no count. You are just seen till it is done and the patients are coming. You are the only person. You realize that the expectation of the patient is that once I get there, within an hour, I should be seen. That expectation is not met because of how the system is set up. And one of them is the simple fact of the inadequacy of the doctors and the nurses and the people around. Mm -hmm. But if you're the only doctor in the district hospital, you are running a clinic, there's nobody else. So if 100 people are there at the same time, someone will be there from 6 a.m. and will leave at 6 p.m. Doc, there's something that beats my mind. So we've been talking about the issue of not having adequate doctors, yet every year we are training doctors. Yes. And I'm, and I'm not sure the inflow is as much as the outflow. So to say that the number of doctors coming in is the same number as those exiting, so that there always is a but Aren't we catching up? Aren't we bridging that gap? We have bridged the gap significantly over the years. We started with one medical school, it increased to two. Now we have four public, five public medical schools. In addition, we have two private medical schools in the country. We are receiving huge numbers coming in from outside as well, training and coming. So that it has improved significantly. What is worrisome to the medical association is the distribution of the doctors. Mm. Whilst you will find several doctors in Kolebu, in Konfanoche, in Accra, in Kumasi in general, in the rural areas, you will struggle to find doctors. But is that not because you have more people at these facilities, Konfanoche, Kolebu? There are people, I mean, I was, I was shocked to learn this was about five or six years ago, that you couldn't just walk into Kolebu. Yes. That you had to be referred. But yes. you have people doing that. People walk in and they expect to be seen. Yeah, that is an abuse of our gatekeeper system. It shouldn't happen. Mm. You can't walk to Kolebu with simple but, malaria. But isn't, isn't that the reason why, probably due to the numbers, it's, it's, it's just a bit, I mean, not to sound uh, disrespectful, but it's just logical that when the numbers are high, you would have more doctors no, so when I say we have more in Kolebu, more in Konfanoche, more in Accra, it's not to say that they have more than they need. Okay. But the point is the distribution is not equitable. So you take my home district. I come from Upper West, the Lambuse district. The entire district has one doctor. How do you compare that with a system where uh, you go to another place like uh, in my unit in Kolebu? In my unit, we have over 20 doctors. We still have so much work to do in my unit where we work on Monday, we do 24 hours. We start 8 a.m., close Tuesday, 8 a.m., and we even do normal work on Tuesday. So we'll be closing sometimes around 2, 3. That's more than <laughs> necessary. Yes, but the situation is that in some parts of the country, we still have very dire inadequacies of the doctors and nurses. And that's where I'm talking about the, mm. um, the inequitable distribution. We had wished and that a lot, every part of this country will have the sufficient numbers. Our numbers, as expected of the WHO standard, is still very low. Mm. The, what, another thing that's compounding this is that people are also exiting. COVID has made it even worse. The West have 
now need doctors, they need healthcare workers, and our people are moving. Mm. Because and there's more opportunity, easier exactly. working environment, and, and, more there's, and there's more money. Yes. yes. So I'll come back to that. <laughs> but on the issue of the health worker, patient to client relationship, yeah. what do you do when you find out? Or let me, let me start this way. Is there an opportunity for people to report issues of abuse yeah. um, that they may have suffered at the hands of a health worker? Yes, there is. We wish that it never happened and never happens in any situation, but it does happen sometimes. And in every hospital, there's a complaint unit. You can make a complaint at the complaint unit. There are suggestion boxes you can put notes into. You can walk up straight to the head of the facility to make a report. This is trying to reform the system and using internal controls. If you are not happy with that and you have an issue with a particular provider, you can go to the regulatory authority. Mm -hmm. So if it's a doctor, you can go to the medical and dental council. If it's a nurse, you can go to the nurses and midwifery council. If it's a laboratory person, you can go to the allied health professions council. Everybody in the health sector, I mean the clinical staff, are regulated because of the um, nature of job that we do. We have licenses we work with that can be seized, that can be suspended. So you can seek redress in that arm. You also have the opportunity to use the normal law courts in case you are not happy with something, you can also seek um, 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 redress in the regular courts. All these avenues are available to patients who feel abused or clients who feel abused. But we really will wish that these abuses don't happen. And it is a reason why the association decided to have this discussion. Mm. Because we've noticed that the relationship between healthcare workers and their clients has deteriorated in a way. It's in evolution. We started from a point where the healthcare worker was seen as the one who knows it all. And when he says it, the patient just have to comply. Then there's been models where we expect the healthcare worker in the position of power to provide uh, guidance. And then again, the client only cooperates. But now we are preaching what we call a mutually participatory model. You have power as a patient, and I wish that our clients and patients know that they have power. They are experts in their own condition. You know yourself more than any doctor. The doctor has medical knowledge, the nurse has medical knowledge, but you know your system. You know what is happening to you, so you have power in that regard. The doctor also has power, but we need these two powers to match to bring out the best results for you. So as a patient, your duty is to provide the right information, mm -hmm ask the relevant questions, answer the questions as truthfully and honestly as possible to guide the doctor. The doctor is supposed to explain what he knows medically to you and provide all the information to you, all alternatives to you. Together, then you plan a management mm. pathway mm. and then you all agree on what to do. So where doctors are not explaining, nurses are not explaining to you, they are coming to give you an injection, you don't even know what injection it is, how many times you're going to get that? I found that, sorry to cut in, but I found yeah. that um, some healthcare professionals in Ghana don't like curious or inquisitive patients. So like you're saying, oh, what's that? What are you giving my child? Yeah. What is it called? Um, can I have any allergic information? Yeah. You know, uh, you know, especially when you go to a local, uh, uh, the public health health facilities. No. You know, and, 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 and we have that. So I'm, I'm happy you're teaching it. Quickly, we need to wrap up this conversation. Yeah. I wish we had time. time. So how are you hoping to disseminate this? After the lecture, which is happening on Friday, Yeah. how does it get to your members? Okay. How do we get practical? With the things that you'll be discussing. Okay, so I want to thank the multimedia group even for this opportunity. We've started a dissemination. We've brought this to a national stage on your platform for everybody to discuss it. It's a tripartite. We need a healthcare worker, we need a patient, and we need the employers or the facility owners to help us achieve this goal of improving this relationship. So for the side of the patient, I think this platform is doing just that for us, empowering the patients to know that they have the right to ask, to know you have the right to your body. You have the right to your medical information. Nothing is supposed to be hidden from you. And you should ask and demand it and get the answers. 
If not, you have the right to object to any treatment. No doctor can touch you without your consent. And you have choice, unless in a place where there's only one doctor, you cannot go anywhere. If you don't like the service of one person, report it and move to another place. Now, on the part of our providers, we are doing what we call continuous professional education and teaching them on this. After this public lecture, a position paper will be produced to all stakeholders. And on the part of the employers, the facility owners, the government, and those who own private facilities, we are going to engage them with the findings of this. For, for instance, one example is that the patient charter provides that you should have privacy. When I'm taking your medical history, nobody else should be around. It should be only you. If there are going to be students around, for instance, in a teaching hospital like where I work, I should seek your permission and inform you that I'm going to talk to you in the presence of students. But we have consulting rooms today where doctors share. What it means is that while I'm talking to you, another doctor is talking to another patient. So that patient can hear your responses to me. And the other, you can also hear her responses. Mm, the privacy right. is lost. So we are hoping to engage all stakeholders mm. so that at the end of the day, we go by the tenets of this patient charter mm. and improve this relationship. So, Doc, are you saying that if I walk into a facility and I see, and usually they tag nurses to doctors, yeah. you know, some, and I see a nurse there and, and I'm being spoken to, I can tell the doctor, can she excuse us? You can if you want to object to the nurse, but it's for good reason that a doctor is with a nurse. Like as a gynecologist, it's unethical for me to see a woman without anybody else around um, for the purpose of all sort of issues, you know. You have to be comfortable. I need a chaperone to be sure that I'm doing what is right. So yeah. it is in your interest that a nurse is there. Okay. If you are objecting to a particular nurse, you could request for a different nurse. Okay. But to say you want to be all alone with a doctor, uh, it's a bit problematic. It's a bit problematic. <laughs> but thank you, Doc. Hopefully we can continue this once the lecture uh, is done on Friday. But exactly. Dr. Titus Bayo is with the Ghana Medical Association. He's its general secretary. And we're talking about healthcare workers and their client relationship. And I mean, I, he, we were having a conversation before this. And I have met very, very nice doctors, some of them working in public institutions, yeah. Yeah? like Dr. Jokuto at Konfanoche, Dr. Uh, Yao Berima at, at Konfanoche, very wonderful doctors. Great. And people are surprised that I say this. They are the reasons I always like to go to uh, Konfanoche Teaching Hospital. Lovely. Keep up the good work you're doing. Thank you. Well, hello, Ghana. <laughs> Happy moment is here. Let's Storm World Cup Qatar 2022 with Storm Energy Drink, Puma Soft Drinks, and Awake Drinking Water from Casapreco Company Limited. Simply buy your favorite Storm Energy Drink, Puma Soft Drinks, and Awake Drinking Water. Text the four-digit unique number on the neck of the bottle to short code star 780 hash option 2, star 780 hash option 2, and follow the prompts on all networks for free. Be one of the lucky winners to this year's World Cup in the monthly draw. You can also win TVs, fridges, microwave ovens, mobile phones, home theaters, free drinks, and more instantly. Please don't waste time. Grab a bottle of Storm Energy Drink, Puma Soft Drinks, and Awake Drinking Water, and let Storm Carter this World Cup. This promotion is on the NLA Caritas platform, and this advert is FDA approved. Terms and conditions apply. When we come back, uh, let me see if we have some time to take some of your comments. Do stay.